Okay, so today will be a little bit of a work for you, just to go some piece of it. Then I'm going to give you a chance to uh, do some graphing on your own. I hope, have I got graph paper on the top here, Caitlin? I hope. Not really? Are there graph, there's graph paper on the exercise already, isn't there? Okay, I'm good then. Okay. All right, so just a quick refresher here. We talked about um, yesterday. I'll go right back to the start, right? We talked about the magic number 3.6. We talked about independent and dependent variables. Independent goes where? Independent goes on the bottom, the X. The dependent goes on the Y, right? We talked about how to plot graphs, which I think you guys already know. We talked about linear linear relationships where the graph is a line exactly line we talked about how to find slope I told you that slope is always a property or has some sort of meaning to the situation in this case here the slope of reaction distance versus speed was what reaction what was it what was the slope meaning I don't remember what was the slope meaning it's fine of reaction, distance, versus speed. Maybe Sean can help. Damn it. You knew that was coming. I don't know. You don't know? Anybody? Reaction time? Right? Reaction time, right? It's right there. It's 0.74 seconds. It's the reaction time. What's well, one way to be able to figure that out, right? You might have to take the unit. It's meters divided by meters per second. And you would know that that's time. You could also take distance divided by speed, y divided by x, and once again, distance divided by speed should you lead you to realizing that it's talking about a time. Okay, so we talked about linear relationships. We talked about negative slope. We talked about quadratic relationships. That's where the uh, have an x squared in there, right? And I showed you that uh, if you double your speed, what happens to the breaking distance? Four times. Four times. What if you triple your speed? <laughs> what was it? Nine times, exactly. Right? You take that uh, speed well, change and square, right? Exactly. It was two and a half times faster than you take two and a half square. Okay, good. Good. Inverse relationship, that's when when one object or when one variable goes up, the other one goes down, right? For example, the more talking you do in class, the lower your mark. It's an inverse relationship. Okay, one, eh? It took me a while to come up with one. I couldn't come up with one yesterday. All right. Now, did we do, did I give you the answer to number one? Should I review that again? I think maybe we should, right? So suppose a student is doing a lab that determines that the y-intercept for a graph of reaction distance versus speed was 3.4. What would this mean in real life? Is it possible to draw a sketch of what this would look like? So I've got reaction distance, reaction distance versus speed, and I've got a y-intercept of 3.4. Um, Craig, what does the y-intercept refer to? Where the line does what? Crosses the y-axis, right? So what they're saying is, is that the y-intercept was, say, 3.4. Right? That value was 3.4. That means that if I'm traveling 0, my reaction distance, not reaction time, reaction distance is 3.4 meters. Does that make any sense? No. If I'm already stopped, why do I need a reaction distance? I'm already stopped, right? So is this possible? No. What does it mean? It means that someone messed up. The reaction um, distance versus speed cannot have a y-intercept of 3.4. It's not possible. In the earlier breaking example, at what speed is the reaction distance 10 meters? You have to go way back to here. Reaction distance was 10 meters, right? So you got to figure out where 10 is going to be. And I think we all agreed it's around there, about 14 meters per second. Is that what we agreed on yesterday? I think, right? Something like that. OK, so 14. So number 2. 14 meters per second. And I think that's where I left off. Am I right? Okay. So Cody's going to help us with number three. Oh, I got a feeling I did this one already yesterday. No? Maybe it was my afternoon class. Okay. Cody's going to help. A graph of reaction distance versus speed is made, and the slope is found to be 0.74. 
I'm going to draw a picture of that. The slope is 0 0.74. Suppose another experiment is made and the slope is found to be steeper. What does this mean? I'm going to draw it for Cody and I'm going to ask him a question. If the slope is steeper, Cody. Oh, yeah, yeah, we did. We, started, we did this. We thing, started. Right? We started. Okay. And then I think the bell went before I realized it, right? Okay. So, Cody, you were listening yesterday. You should be good. Give me a slope value that would correspond to that red one. A number. A number. Okay. How did you come up with that number? That's good. That's right. Bigger than 0.74, exactly. Okay, so you're going to say a slope of, I'm going to put 1.0 just to make sure we know the number. Okay, so now what does that mean in the situation of, um, we're talking about react, no, reaction distance versus speed. So what does that mean about the person? The reaction time is faster, you say. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mitchell, yeah, I know you weren't here, but what do you think? Okay, well, let's step back for a second. Then. Does the speed that you're going have anything to do with your reaction time? No. So, okay. So, Cody has given us a reaction, a slope of one, and you say that that means the reaction time is faster. Is that right? Okay. What do you think? Okay. Is he right? Or should the reaction time be slower? Slower. Because it was 0.74 and that was a whole second. So you think that means slower? Okay. So I got Cody on the, it means faster island, and I got Sean on the, it's the slower island. You're going to have to choose. I'm not going to whistle the Jeopardy song, but think about it for a second. Okay. I'm going to ask you to raise your hand and see which island you want to be on. And it's okay to be wrong. One of you guys are going to be wrong, right? You okay with that? I okay. usually am. <laughs> Don't listen to other people, man. All right. So how many people think the reaction time is faster? <laughs> oh, it's pretty lonely island, Cody. But you might be right still. So. How many people think the reaction time is slower? <laughs> how many people don't have an opinion? Don't want to be wrong. <laughs> Thanks for stepping up. I don't. Because you're absolutely right, John. Sorry, Cody. It's all right. You'll be right sometime. Yes, the reaction time is slow. Very good, right? And I'll actually, Cody, that mistake I get every year. People make that mistake all the time. They think that because the number is bigger, that it means it's faster, right? But it really means it's how long it takes for your foot to get to the brake, so it's really slower, right? Yeah, it's just a bit of a reverse thing you got it. So what is the answer here? Well, let's we'll see what the question is. What does it mean? It means a... Slower reaction time. And what would that mean for your reaction distance then? Would it be bigger? Would it be longer? Or would it be shorter? Why would it be longer? Exactly. Good. I tried to get fool you. Okay. Of course it would be farther, right? You're going to be going the same speed, but for a longer period of time. It means that you're going to likely run into that deer. Okay, now number four is probably the hardest question yet. Did anybody even read number four again? Yeah? Okay, let's read number four together. Ben's looking forward to it. He's back there. He's just excited. Alex, what? That's annoying. I know, but it, you know why? That's just so annoying that I'm calling you that. Figure six shows the relationship between the circumference and the diameter of a circle. Does everybody know what the circumference and diameter mean of a circle? Mitchell, tell me, what's the diameter of a circle? All the way across. Excellent. And circumference? It's all the way around. All the way around, right? Okay, so we've got a graph of circumference versus diameter. Would a different circle's circumference create a different graph? If I had a different circle, would I get a different graph? Yes, maybe. Probably not. Alex. No. Explain. Because that's just a guess. Hey? The formula to find a circle is always the same. So no matter what your diameter is, it's all the same slope. Okay. Who wants to agree with that or disagree? What do you think, Larissa? Do you want to agree or disagree with Mr. McKenzie? They will just call him McKenzie and now I won't screw up his name. You agree with him? 
Maybe it's because his brother's name is Ben. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> What? Is that, are you, is that sarcasm? I think everybody else is. <laughs> I just figured that out. <laughs> I'll see if I can find a sticker for you at my desk. <laughs> Emily. What, explain that a little bit more. What do you mean by the points on the graph would be the same? Oh, the slope of the line would be the same? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know what? You're absolutely right. And I'm quite pleasantly surprised because usually I get the entire class disagreeing and they always say, yeah, you'd get a different graph. It's a different circle. But the point is, this graph right here, how many circles am I talking about? At least five. I've got a circle of diameter 1, I've got a circle of diameter 2, a circle of diameter 3, 4, and 5, and all the ones in between. I've got an infinite number of circles there, and it's a straight line. The bigger the diameter, the bigger the circumference, and there's a relationship there. What would that relationship be? What is the formula for circumference and diameter? Anybody? Dylan, do you know the formula for circumference and diameter in a circle? Like if I had to write C for circumference and D, what else would I need to make it complete? R something. Okay. Pi what? Exactly. So C equals pi times D, right? Right. The the mythical pi. So on my graph right here, what's my what's my y uh, quantity? C. No. The, like what am I measuring on the y? Circumference. What am I measuring on the x? Diameter, right? So my slope, my m, is my circumference divided by my diameter, right? And if I take this formula right here and I rearrange it to make it circumference divided by diameter, I would do it by doing this, right? And what am I left with? Pi equals circumference over diameter. What's the slope of this line going to be? What's the slope of this line going to be? And if you haven't, aren't going to write this down, you really should. If you haven't thought about that, all right. What's the slope of that, that, of that uh, graph? 3.1415926. It's pi. Don't tell me you've got to memorize 100 decimal places. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not the biggest nerd in the world. I'm just going to put the... Okay, the slope of that is pi. It's the meaning, it's the value of it, right? Okay, the meaning of that is pi. It was the Egyptians that came up with that one. Okay, every slope has a meaning. Every slope has a meaning. All right, what I would like you to do is I would like you to do exercises one, two, and three. The first one, I give you the graph, you just have to read it. The second one, you're going to have to make a graph and then read it. And the third one, I think the same thing. Okay? Here's what I'm going to suggest, what normally works well, is I'm going to give you, say, about five, seven minutes to do exercise one, and then I'll give you the answers, make sure you're on the right track, and then give you the rest of the time to work on two and three. How does that sound? Okay, it should be right on that, right on that package there. Kristen, did you have this handout at all? Okay, so i got to find an next one for you. Let's have a look at answers for number one. We're going to do number one right away. Okay? Uh, the graph shows the mass of three substances for volumes between 0 and 60 cent cubic centimeters. What is the mass of 30 cubic centimeters of each substance? 30 cubic centimeters. So I have to go to my 30. You're just reading the graph. So you should have gotten those values there. So what are they? Looks, oh, looks like about... What the hell is going on? I don't know, man. Twilight Zone. Click it. Click on the screen. Click. Just click somewhere. Where's the cursor? Oh, right there. Oh, there it is there. Okay. <laughs> All right. So what do we got here? About uh, 20, 40, about 50? 50, 95 maybe? Yes, that's what I got. Something like that. And 150? The first one. It's 55? Okay. Right on 50. okay. Well, those ones are close, right? Can, basically, can you read a graph? I hope so. If you had 100 grams of each substance, what would their volumes be? So this now you're going 
across from 100, right? So you're talking 20 cubic centimeters. You're talking about uh, 30, 30, 33 cubic centimeters. Is that right? And uh, I guess that's about 50 cubic centimeters. Can you read a graph? Okay. Uh, what are the units of the slope of the graph? What are the units of the slope of the graph? The slope, I mean, I just need some space here to work, right? The, what's the y units right now? Grams. What's the x units right now? Centimeters cubed, right? So slope is always y over x. So I take my y units, which are grams, and I divide by my x units, which are? Cubic centimeters. So what are the units of the slope of the graph? Grams per cubic centimeter. Wow. Grams per cubic centimeter. Now, describe the meaning of the slope of the graph. What do we measure in grams per cubic centimeter? <laughs> Megan knows? <laughs> density is correct. For 100 points, the correct answer is density. So one way to determine what the meaning of the slope is is to look at the units and then for, try to figure that out, right? If you have to Google up grams per cubic centimeter, go ahead. Okay. Another way would be to look at the values or the quantities of the of the uh, slope. We're going to be uh, taking mass is my y and my x is volume. What is mass divided by volume? What is M over V equal to? I think gray is a grade nine. When do you guys talk about density? I can't even remember. Nobody knows? Mass over volume is D, density. Okay, that's the other way to do it. All right, so I would like you to complete numbers two and three. In number two, you need to do the graph, right? Do the same kind of thing there, same kind of questions. And then number three, once again, do the graph. This is force and acceleration. Go ahead. Let's look at number two. How many people have, we'll say, completed at least two thirds of number two? Hands up. Completed about half to two thirds of number two. Okay, so let's go over number two and then maybe that'll give you a chance to uh, finish up number two. So during an experiment, a student measured the mass of 10 cubic centimeters of ethanol. The student then measured the mass of 20 cubic centimeters of ethanol, and this way the jar on the table looks like. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Plot the values given in the table and draw the curve that best fits all points. Describe the resulting curve and use the graph. Write an equation relating the value to the mass of the alcohol. Find the units of the slope of the graph and what is the name given to this quantity. Okay, so I'm hoping that all of you got the graph part done, right? Okay, so I'm, I'm guessing you probably went 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And then did you go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, did you go by fives? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, and 40. Make it as big as you can. So 10 and 7.9 is about there. Uh, 20 and 15.8 is about there. 30 and 23.7 is about there. Uh, 40 and 31.6 is about there. And 39.6 is about there. There, which means that it's more or less a what? Straight line. Should zero zero be included? Yes. For sure, because if you got zero cubic centimeters, you got zero mass, right? So for sure, it's just start from zero. And did you get pretty almost perfect data? Right? Which doesn't always happen. Okay. How many people got that part? Connor, you didn't get that far? Okay. Okay, I'm just checking. Okay, describe the resulting curve. It's not a curve, it's a straight line. Use the graph to write an equation relating the mass, the volume to the mass alcohol. How many people, this is the part that got hard. Okay, so how do we write an equation? The first thing to do is find the slope. Pick two points that are on the graph. Can I pick zero, zero? You can. I would rather you not because it sets up a bad habit. Okay, so let's just pick two points. Are those two okay? 
Are any of these points better than any others? Well, not really. They're all pretty much right on the line, right? Okay, so I'm going to pick those points. So this, what's the y value right here? It's the 31.6, right? And what's the y value right here? It's uh, 7.9. And the x value here is 40, and the x value here is 10. What happens if you got different points than me? Is that okay? Yeah. Sure, it's okay. Okay, so now I'm going to go 31.6, and I'm going to subtract 7.9, and I'm going to get 23.7. And 40 minus 10, I think I can do in my head, and I'm going to divide by 30. 0 0.79. How many groups got something pretty close to that? I mean, how many people got somewhere between, like, say, 0 0.6 and 0 0.9? Good. What's the y-intercept? It should be zero, right? It should be zero. Let's just see what my y-intercept sort of works out to be. Okay. How do you get a y-intercept, right? I'm going to write y equals mx plus b. I'm going to pick an x and a y point. Let's use these ones right here. So my x here is 10. So I'm going to write 0.79. My x is 10. The y that corresponds to 10 is 7.9. That's convenient. Plus b. I'm going to solve for b. 7.9 is equal to what's 0.79 times 10? 7.9. And guess what my b value is? That's great. What if it was 0 0.1? That's okay. It's pretty close to 0. Is science an exact thing? No. It never is. In textbooks it is, but it's not in real life. Okay? So b is equal to 0. So now, what is my equation? My equation is y equals mx plus b. y equals, what's my m value? 0.79. x, what's my b? 0. Should I write plus 0? Yeah, it makes you happy. What are actually my y and my x Quantities. The y is actually the what? Mass, is it not? And this is actually volume. So my y is actually mass, my x is actually volume. So really what I've got is mass equals 0.79 times volume. Or if you prefer, m is 0.79 b. Yes, I know I've overwhelmed you a little bit. Find the units of the slope of the graph. What are the units of mass? Grams. What are the units for volume? Cubic centimeters. What are the units for the slope? Grams per cubic centimeter. What's the slope in this case again? Density. The density of this alcohol is 0.79 grams per cubic centimeter. Every slope has a mean. Every slope has a mean. In this case, once again, I gave you an easy one. It's the density. Are there any other questions? There? No, there isn't. Okay. Use those steps that I just showed you to complete number three. Use those steps that I just showed you to complete number three. You've got about seven or eight minutes. Okay? Fair warning, this is a little more challenging. A little more. Okay? Good luck. We'll go we'll over tomorrow.